Okay, so probability question here, guys. So it's asking us to think about uh, tiles. We're taking a random tile, it does not replace it, so that's important. And then he takes the second tile. Um, so we know that the uh, denominator of the fractions for these probabilities are going to get one less as we take the second tile. So it's something to watch out for when you don't replace. Um, it says calculate the probability that both the tiles taken will have the number one on them. So basically what we're saying is we want the probability of the first tile to be 1 and the probability of the second tile to be 1. And what we should realise, these are independent. Uh, the probability of the first tile will not affect what the probability is for the second tile. And we recognise then that that means we multiply these probabilities together because they're independent of each other. A lot of people would also say that if you think of it as something and something when you're doing probabilities, then you're timesing the individual probabilities to get the answers to. That will work as well. So we've got uh, the probability of getting the first tile is a 1. Well, there was one, two ones out of the 7. So the probability of getting the first uh, number to be 1 was 2 out of 7. That means we've taken one of the ones. So we're only left with one choice the second time round, but now we're down to six tiles. And what we've got to remember is when we're multiplying fractions, we multiply the numerators, so 2 times 1, and we multiply the denominators, so 7 times 6, and we usually cancel down where we can. So each of these numbers have a factor of 2, so I'll have it down. Um, you do this on a calculator nowadays, guys, because you've got your fraction keys and it's a calculator paper, so you can do 2 7 on your calculator times 1 6 on your calculator and so forth. So that would be the answer for that particular question. Um, the question does go on then to talk about what's the probability that the number on the second tile is greater than the number on the first tile. So when you're not sure what's going on, uh, quite often if you think about a, a tree diagram, then that could help you to see what's going on. So let's have a look what's going on. So the chance of the first tile, it, well, the outcome could have been a 1, it could have been a 2, or it could have been a 3. The second tile, well, if you got the 1 the first time around, could still get the 1 the second time around, could get the 2, and could get the 3. If you got 2 the first time around, could get the 1, could get the 2, could get the 3 next time around. So we're basically um, developing a picture now of what could have happened as we do first tile, second tile. So if we could have got a 3 on the first tile, then we could have got a 1 on the second, we could have got a 2 on the second, and we could have got a 3 on the second. So basically we're going to go through now and looking at um, the scenario we want. We want the number on the second tile to be greater than the number on the first tile. So we can go through and tick off what works. So here we can see that the number on the first tile, number on the second tile, this is greater, this is greater. Got two on the first one, that would not work, that would not work, but three would, because that is greater than the first tile. I've uh, got a 3 on the first tile, not greater, not greater, not greater. So these three are the outcomes that will give you the condition they wanted. They wanted the second tile to be greater than the first tile, the number on each. So for this one, we want the probability of getting a 1 on the first tile times the probability of getting a 2 on the second tile. Well, that's going to be 2 out of 7 for the first tile, because remember there were two ones out of the seven tiles altogether, times, well the probability to get a two, well there's three twos left to choose from if we chose a one first, but it's out of six of course because we've already taken a tile out, so it's going to be three out of six. The other out one of the other outcomes that works for this uh, particular question was getting a one the first time followed by a three, so that's going to be the probability of one times the probability of a three. And the probability of one remains the same, two sevens the first time, but there were two threes in the tiles, um, but there's only six choices left, so it's going to be two out of six this time round. And then this one, it was the probability of getting a two the first time round, and the probability of several times of them, and the probability of getting a three the second time round. So in this case, the probability of getting a two the first time round was three out of seven, and the probability of getting a three was two out of six. There's only six tiles left. So we work out all those uh, answers. Again, you could use your calculator fraction keys, uh, but 642, uh, 442, and 642. Um, because any of these outcomes actually give you the conditions that was wanted, 
then we add these together because we've basically got this one's possible or this one's possible or this one's possible and when you see the word or it means you're going to be adding the probabilities because they're mutually exclusive so we've got 642s plus 442s plus 642s which makes 1642 so the total was 16 out of 42 and again you could leave the answer 16 out of 42 but ideally with um, calculator papers you're going to press the button and it will tell you the answer what it cancels down to anyway so 4 goes into both of those so it's going to be no it doesn't, 4 does not mm, what are you doing? do your calculator too late in the day, 16 over 42 equals 8 over 21, there you go, so 8 over 21 Alright then guys, so that's a quick reminder of how you can do independent probability questions um, not involving replacement, so conditions put on it, technically called conditional probability with independent events. Okay, so just a quick reminder, and we think of as times in the probabilities and so forth. When there's no replacement and it gives you uh, some conditions, then tree diagrams sometimes help you to see a little bit clearly what's going on. Just be careful that these were in blocks, so we didn't have to write out seven different options. It was only about whether you got a one, a two, or a three. So watch for that in exam questions, because you shouldn't be drawing massive tree diagrams um, at GCSE level. Hopefully that's useful.